Okay, uh, the title of our presentation is Unveiling the Latin American Civilization Course, a Pedagogical Expedition. Um, again, my name is Jeanette Pineda, and I'm here with Professor Melba Amador. Uh, we are both professors from Penn State University. We are in different campuses. Um, I'm located um, near Pittsburgh. I'm in the Fayette Everly campus. And Melba, do you want to tell us? Hi, um, I am located in the New Kensington campus, and we are uh, east of Pittsburgh, about, I think, about maybe, what, 40 minutes from Pittsburgh? Yes. And what we're, our presentation goal here today is to share some information that, about how to teach a Latin American course in a hybrid mode, a speed pace, seven week course. What are the challenges that we have um, encountered? What are some successes that we have encountered? Uh, and just talk with you, have an informal conversation if we have time about what are some new tools that you've been using while you are, your performance and your teaching and your experience in um, higher education. So uh, just to let us know a little bit about civilization classes. So um, some of the civilization classes that are offered at Penn State that deal with Spanish. Um, so we have the Spanish 130, which is focused on Iberian culture and civilization. So Spain and Portugal, uh, Spanish 131 and 131Y. And the Y designation is more a, a writing intensive class. Um, that's the only difference between the two. Uh, it's more about Spanish American and Brazilian uh, life. Um, and it actually starts from the conquest to um, present day, day, but it does include um, the indigenous indigenous lives, usually in context with, with the Spanish, right? Um, and these two classes, the 130 and 131, they are taught for non-majors in Spanish. So they are taught in English. Spanish 210 is the same thing, but Iberian, uh, and 220 is the same thing as 131, but the difference is that these are taught in Spanish and these are taught for majors and minors in Spanish. Um, next slide, please. Uh, Spanish 220, just to talk about it very briefly, I have taught that class. Um, and like I said before, you know, it does talk about the conquest to the present. Uh, it talks about literature, art, indigenous heritage, contemporary problems that we have. It does include African-American, um, Right, African Latino experience, um, and it does provide learners like a broad uh, and general introduction to the lands, the peoples, the history of Latin America. Um, it kind of provides a, a greater appreciation of Latin Americans' cultural origins, socioeconomic and sociopolitical uh, development, and everyday realities. Right, so one of the topics we go about in this course deals with immigration because that's one of the realities that that they're faced with. Um, and this particular course um, counts for the major in Spanish and for the minor because it is taught in, in Spanish. Now, Jeanette just will talk about the one that we will focus on our uh, on this presentation is Spanish 131, which is for non-majors, which is taught in English. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so the title for this class is Ibero-American Civilization. And here you can see a, a very brief description about what the course is about. The idea here is to provide uh, an overview of Latin American history, Latin American culture. So the students will just go uh, and hit different modules and every module has a main topic. And those topics are exemplified through countries. So for example, where we'll have a module about, it talks about Latin American art and literature. So the students will go into exploring Latin American literature uh, within two different countries, or for example, Mexico and Argentina, for example. Uh, they also will explore, explore religion, um, and they will use the example of the Caribbean to explore religion. So it's like an overview of like all the different countries that compose the Latin American and in these within these different themes. So that's the idea for us. We also deal at the end of the chapter with the United States. So how do we relate the United States with the Latin American history, right? I mean, they're absolutely, there's an intricate relationship there and we want the students to know that. So the involvement of the United States regarding sovereignty is going to be dealt with. Um, and we also talk about what are some possible ways and like uh, Melba mentioned before, uh, to deal with immigration, right? That's a very hot topic right now. And we're going to be, so we try to make it a very modern class. Um, 
and, and, and more upbeat so the students can relate to the topic that they're learning. The, the competencies that we want for our students in this course is for them to have knowledge and understanding, obviously, of the, na the nations of Latin America, the Caribbean. We want them to understand how Latin America and its people belong to this global scene. So we don't want them to see us as, as a separate entity, like far away, we don't know about that. But no, they are um, constant contribu contributors of a, our reality, our modern reality, and we want them to know that. Uh, we want them to know the link that they have with the United States, obviously, and what is the, the future for Latin America? What do they see coming? So based on this, this exploration of Latin America, the history, the culture, what is the future look like for Latin America? And they are going to be developing into that at the end of the semester. And some homeworks and assessments that we have for the class. Um, yes, yeah, so some of the um, homework and assessments, and of course, this is not for the same class, right? These are within like 220 and 131 classes, right? Uh, so some weekly comprehension quizzes, and they're just very short, sweet, kind of multiple choice or true, false, like that kind of thing to see, like, did you read the, the reading? Um, some discussion posts, um, weekly news updates. Um, and I'll show you an example of, of what I ask them, what I request of them. Uh, video presentations, they can be recorded, right? So, so the reactions to some to, to a question that we post. Um, also essay exams, uh, where they get to cite and use the book, um, annotated bibliography, research paper. Um, and then for the 131Y, because it is a class that is a writing intensive class, is a, is a capstone project. Um, based on a film that they get to to see. My students in the 131, without the Y, uh, they do get to see the same film. They do have a research paper, right? But it's not like a capstone project, like for 131Y. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, yes, so as Melva mentioned, that the writing component for 131Y is one of the, the requirements that the students need to, to have. So they need to complete this requirement. Um, for many of their um, of their degrees that they're pursuing, and the way that we that I'm using this writing component is, I don't know if um, many of you are dealing with this, but I am dealing with it, and Melba is also. Uh, we are seeing a lot of use of AI um, generators. So if I ask a student to just pick a topic about Latin America, tell me about religion. Uh, Yoruba religion in Cuba, for example. I'm pretty sure that they could just type that and chat GPT and then there's a big, beautiful essay is going to come out. So the idea here is if we use a film, and this film is called The Trails of Hope and Terror, and um, it deals with, it's a documentary about following immigrants crossing the U.S.-Mexico border. This film you have to purchase it. So we did purchase through our university. You have to pay for it in order to have access. And then with that license, we upload it then in our Canvas course. And that's how the students get to see it. So there's no way for them to just Google it or put it on ChatGPT because it's a purge um, film and documentary. So that was one of the idea that we thought, well, maybe we have something that the students really, really must see um, so they can talk about it. This will be a good, a good, um, a good try. So we tried this. We have incorporated the trace of folklore and terror. And the good thing about this documentary is that it can link very well with the different modules that they have seen. So they talked about, um, for example, the women experience, and they talk about the Bracero movement, and they talk about immigration, and they talk about um, manifest destiny. And all of those are topics that we have seen through the course. So it's pretty good because they get to watch this, they get to pick a topic that kind of resonates with them, and then they link it together. And this is something that they must do Without the use of ChatGPT, ChatGPT we will not be able to create something like this. So that was one of the the main goals for us to include um the film. It's only a one hour film, so it's pretty it's pretty decent for them to watch. They they have not complained at all about this um about watching the film. They actually like it because it's a, like an extra resource that we're providing for them. Mm -hmm. Uh, some of the challenges, so this is pretty much, we gave you an overview about what the course looks like. And we wanted to um, also share with you what are some challenges of the course in itself. First of all, the book that we use, we need to find the book 
that will fit within the time frame that we have. We only have seven weeks with the students. Learning Latin American culture and Latin American history in seven weeks is very challenging. I mean, you cannot get the whole complete picture about it. So we needed to find a book that had, you know, few chapters that they were easy to read um, and and then that they kind of like encompass with the uh, with the rhythm of the class. Um, if this is an asynchronous class, therefore the textbook cannot be too dense. Uh, it cannot be too hard for them to read because we do not provide the extra support during, you know, in a regular course, like our lesson plans, right? Like on the lesson. So we needed something that the book, that the book will be self-explanatory in itself. So that's a, a challenge in itself. Right now we're using the book, it's called America by Bernadette Orr, it's this book. Um, it is kind of old school for our preference. Um, I think it's 2013 the date, but I mean, it does have, it does provide these like, um, only we have 13 units on it. So the students can do two units at a time and they're very short lengthwise. Uh, another challenge that we have find is, is because of the format, like I mentioned, this is an eight week asynchronous class, a lot of speed on the class. The student body uh, will also be part of these challenges. Many of the students take this class, not because they're interested in, in learning about Latin America, but because it's a Janet um, requisite. So we have students that they must take the class. So many of them could have this attitude of like, oh, I have to take this. I just don't care about, I don't care about the, the, the component. I just wanna get you know the grade and get, so I can get my GPA up. So. We have to deal with students that may think that, um, not all of them, obviously, but some of them might do. And we do not have the interaction with the students as in a regular classroom. So it's hard to kind of know the student to get these, um, to develop this bond with the student and vice versa. And finally, the other challenge that we have encountered is the use of technology. I mean, the students have to be, have to know how to op use our operating system, which is Canvas um and how to communicate via email how to make sure that uh announcements that are posted on our canvas they can they have access to it via email as well so there's a lot of uh technical technological uh, knowledge that they need to have and finally the use of ai generator that's a big challenge that we have encountered and um we would like to talk more about that at the end of the presentation and, and kind of like um hear from you what are your uh, experiences with that mm -hmm. So we'll just pass that at, and we'll leave it until the end. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I want you to think about your classes and what are some of the challenges that you have in your classes. Now let's talk also about the strategies. Some other some of the strategies to try to deal with uh, those issues that we have is, for example, the use of external material to supplement uh, the class. The the book she met uh, that uh, Jeanette mentioned. My copy of it is from 1992. So it's very old. Um, and then it does recommend uh, throughout it some other texts. And I do have them, but they're also from 1992. And in a seven week course, you know, all, three books is not a possibility. So, but um, one of the things that leads me to the second one is the weekly news updates, right? So this is the way that I have dealt in my classes and we have dealt with it is to, do discussion posts where the students have to search for weekly news updates. Uh, for example, BBC World News, right? And uh, pick a country, pick a, any any news, right? There's some parameters, right? Like it cannot be this. And during COVID times, it was all about COVID. Uh, so I had to put a line like, it cannot be about COVID unless it's talking about the economy or like something else, right? So um, the use of non-commercial documentaries and films, like Jeanette mentioned with the uh, the film that we use. Um, try to employ different strategies to deter the use of AI. Uh, for example, in my students, I have them like break down their final research paper, right? Like they have to come up with like a couple of thesis statements that they would like to explore. And then I give them feedback on it and then they rework them and then they bring in the topic st sentences and right. So it's a this back and forth collaboration that they have to break it down. And I can see like where the where their thoughts are going, right? Um, recorded pr video presentations of the students. Um, um, we have something called the student lounge under discussion posts. It's actually something that students can just use 
they have a question, they can just post it there. Another student can answer, I can answer it. Um, uh, post the, ru the rubric that you'll be using. So, so the learners are like, they know what to expect, right? Um, be present, be available. Uh, our, both our classes are all on online. They're all asynchronous. Um, my class usually is uh, not just my campus, it's open to other campuses. It's on what we call the DLC. So um, the digital learning co-op. Um, and so I have students that are from different campuses across the state. And uh, so some I don't get to see in person, but I do have Zoom office hours. I, I make sure that I um, even send them like direct emails. I say, hey, I noticed that your thesis statement wasn't there yet. How about if we meet through Zoom and like talk it out? And we, you know, we we find ways to communicate with them. Um, and then we did a midterm feedback survey that we'll talk briefly about um, towards the end. But I wanted to, can you please send, uh, pass the next slide? Um, just to show you, for example, this is an example of the weekly news updates that we do in my class, right? Like they, there's the uh, parameters, right? Like you need to summarize the article, tell the class what it was about. Um, and then I give them the news so, uh, places that I, I tell them where to go, right? Because if I tell them like, yeah, just go to the BBC, where in that page, right? So I give them exactly where I want them to go. They can still click on the different countries and, and choose the country that they want to um, research about for that week. So we do this, um, you know, like with our classes. So next, please. We're about to finish. So once again, think about some successes that you've had in your classes. Okay. And then just very quickly, the, the survey, right? So we have some survey. Um, I have to say that the most successful, I mean, it was really interesting. My students, uh, out of 28 students, 23 answered the survey. Um, the questions were, the, so we did like regular, just multiple choice or pick all that, right? Like top, that type of sentence. But then on the next slide, so we did open-ended. I, we told them to think in a constructive manner. What helps you learn in this course? Tell me what works well in this course, right? So we try to make those type of questions instead of like, what did you like? What didn't you like? Like, instead of like that. Uh, can you show the next one? So these were some examples um, of, and I have to say like, I, I picked, really picked randomly because all the questions were like, I mean, all the answers were like this pretty much, right? Having weekly assignments was very informative, PowerPoints that has really helped me reinforce the material covered in the textbook. So there was so something like that. Uh, we were concerned about like, are we having enough time for the quizzes? Like, yeah, I typically typically finish them in five to seven minutes. They have 20 minutes to finish them. So um, next slide. Um, now some things to improve, right? What's interesting is that they kept talking about like, oh, can be can they be made available before? Friday, yes, they're available on Thursday actually. But, um, and so, I mean, some things that they haven't really noticed that yes, we do that already, right? And then the next, and to, before. <laughs> so this one actually was really interesting to me because, and this was actually like anything that you wanna say about the course. There was a lot of like, no, no need to change. No, I've said everything I need to change. So there's a lot of that. But these last two really, I mean, I liked everything that they had to say, but overall, I think this is a good course that definitely helps you see a different perspective on the world. Um, so far, this course has been very interesting and I have learned a lot of different things that I didn't know previously. I look forward to learning more about Latin America. This is what we want, right? This is what we want students to leave the class with. So they might not know who, I don't know, Fujimori was, right? Like, or is in Peru, right? Or he was the president, like, but 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 they finished the class with that desire, right? So thank you very much. Um, if you have any questions, we'll address them at the end. But our contact, feel free to contact us. Thank you.